Welcome back everyone to another episode from Ampro Engineering and this is going to be another installment of the buyer's guide focusing on a magnificent little piece of RC history. This is the Tyco Turbo Hopper. This car was sold under a few names. Uh, its native branding is not Tyco, it is Tayo and it should say right here made by Tayo in Singapore. This would have been known, I believe, as the Tayo Jet Hopper. Same basic car. I don't know if some of the decals were maybe slightly altered. I suspect they were all quite similar. This is a neat little car. Back when I was a youngster, I had a lot of friends that had these. And back then, you either had the Turbo Hopper or you had the Turbo Panther by Nico. I don't want to focus on a comparison between the two in this episode. I just want to focus on the Turbo Hopper. This is the first generation of the car. Later variants had a much lower profile rear tire. This early version had a very puffy rear tire, the smaller rear wheel. I believe, and I'm not an expert on this, but the third and last generation not only had the low profile rear tire and front tire, but it also had the little moving driver's head, which was known as the heads up turbo hopper. That one, to my knowledge, has a battery access door on the bottom like the Tyco Bandit. This particular one is kind of interesting. So we'll pull out this little clip here. If I can get it off. Excuse the paint on my hands. I'm restoring a bookcase right now. You lift the body up and slide slightly forward. There we go. Open the little compartment here. And you have access to eight AA batteries. I found that, and it's very likely that this had it originally, but if you put a little fabric tab down here, a little strip, when you install the batteries, you can use the fabric to pull the batteries up and prevent them from being lodged in here for the next 50 years. With the body off the car, I think it's probably a good idea to take a look at the car. As you saw a moment ago, this does run on eight AA batteries. They can be alkaline or NICAD. However, I very much recommend that simply due to the car's age, you don't run anything faster than some, maybe some nickel metal hydrides. Oftentimes, these early versions without a differential, you'll find very commonly with the transmission damage, and that has to do with power transfer to the ground, to both tires at the exact same time and when you're turning that can always put a load on the inside tire so it's very common to find these damaged. Their front suspension is pretty straightforward. It does have a pogo stick, uh, almost exactly the same operation as the Grasshopper, the Tamiya Grasshopper. The front suspension, as you saw a moment ago, is a swing arm so as you go up the car does have a camber gain. This was not the case with the Nico Turbo Panther, which had it hinged in the front. The servo does have a motor, so it uh, is not an electromagnetic servo. If you do hit left or right, there's a tiny motor in here that will give power to the silver horn. And what's neat about this is it does in fact have a servo saver. So it's simply a beautiful little design. Uh, hard to believe that a relatively inexpensive toy would have had a servo saver. I say toy because I don't make any distinction between one of these that is able to be purchased at a consumer store like Target or Toys R Us or Tesco versus something that is purchased at a hobby shop. To me, they're all toys. But uh, something at this price point, and mind you, this was probably around $75 in the mid 80s, which puts it at uh, a, a quite a considerable penny today. It does have some nice little Nerf bars as features here. The transmission does have a single pivot point. So if you are familiar with the Tamiya Grasshopper, it works the exact same way. There is no, no axle articulation. And we do have two rear springs at the, at the back. What's amazing about this car is the spring rate is just fantastic. I mean, usually these uh, more inexpensive RC cars have overly stiff springs, in my opinion, designed by somebody who has no understanding of, of, of anything mechanical at all, let alone cars or RC cars. This one here is simply pressing down the center of the car. You've got some excellent spring rate. The car is, of course, bouncy as you drive it around. But uh, overall, it's very controllable. And you'll see in the video shortly how the car performs. What's interesting about the car is that when you are uh, driving forward or reversing, you have steering. 
if you are coasting, you do not have operational steering. I believe that is different in the second generation of the car because the Tyco Bandit that I have always has steering regardless of throttle input. When you are driving this car in the turbo mode, I think it's a good idea to show the remote here just very quickly. Driving like this, we'll put the car in low, pressing a little bit harder, it's hard to see, we'll put the car into turbo and engage a second speed. It's quite fast for its size. I think it's actually quite fast in general. However, when turning, the car will drop into low speed and allow you to turn. And once the turn has been completed, it'll go back into high and allow you to uh, travel at your faster rate. I think that simply has to do with controllability and the fact that this thing probably will flip over at high speed turning, especially given the fact that it has a solid rear end. That could make it a little bit trickier as well. Speaking of the rear end, we do have fast and we have slow. Fast is usually the only one that they would recommend with NICAD batteries. In the video, you will see the car with alkalines in fast, and uh, the car is quite speedy. In fact, I, I wager that it is faster than a 380 equipped Tamiya Grasshopper. It's quite a remarkable little car. Let's look at that radio again. This is what you would have gotten with the first generation car. I don't know what came with the second gen, but I believe the third gen would have come with this radio here. And I do apologize for the condition of this. It is up for restoration very soon. But let's focus on this one here. It does have a, see again, you know, you've got forward and then pressing a little harder, you've got turbo. The feel, and this may be uh, the fact that this is maybe just a bit uh, old. It doesn't have the best feel. Uh, the response is excellent electronically, but the mechanical feel isn't very good left and right. The whole radio has kind of a really cheap feel. Like, you know, I just, to me, it just, I, I don't know. I think the radio is quite bad, but it could be because I'm used to this radio, which absolutely has, it feels so much nicer. And the fact of the matter is low and then high. That is, that is fantastic. This one here, I think is, I don't know. I think it's cheap. The later version, um, is awesome because first off it's a little tiny pistol grip for little tiny hands as you can see my hands are a bit husky so that's not going to work too fantastic for me left and right I always found to be quite quite good as a child and uh, low gear has a very noticeable stop and pushing a little bit harder will give you a quite satisfying click but most importantly that green light will illuminate I do want to look at the body for a moment oftentimes this car is uh, kind of equated to the grasshopper, but comically enough, the body has no bearing at all to the grasshopper. In fact, when this body was designed, Tayo went a little bit further back in history than the grasshopper, the Super Champ. So the Super Champ, when compared to this one here, uh, they're effectively exactly the same. Uh, the main difference is the wing, which, as you can see here, unscrews. And when unscrewed, has characteristics just like the wing on the Super Champ. In fact, straight down to this little, if you can see it there, this little plastic boss right here. It's exactly the same as what the Super Champ has. This particular car is missing all four of its spotlights. I'm in the process of making some aftermarket ones so that... Uh, uh, if you are interested in replacing the ones on your car, we can actually do that now. So I'm designing those. You would have had one here, 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 and here, just like the Super Champ. And again, there's a number of elements that uh, harken back to quite a beautiful Tamiya uh, RC car of the early 80s. Why not make a mid-80s consumer level version of it that is equally as attractive. So I think Tayo hit one out of the park with this car, even down to the little grills on the side here and the grills on the side. I mean, they're quite similar. I do want to show the car driving around, but prior to that, I would like to go over a few things to look out for if you're interested in a turbo hopper. Usually one of these in mediocre condition, and I would wager that this one's in mediocre to good condition. I mean, there's no major damage to the car. It's quite nice. You're looking at about $70 to $100, and this is in 2017. If you're looking at this in 2027, uh, this may be a $50,000 car. Who knows? Maybe I should have bought 20 more of these. I always miss out on those opportunities. Right now, they're quite reasonably priced, but if you get something that's very, very mint or new in box, you're looking at upwards of five or six hundred dollars due to their popularity when they were new and the fact that most of the most children when they were four and five years old got these they were quite heavily 
loved, we'll, we'll say, and there uh, aren't that many survivors, at least in terms of how many were produced. So if you are looking at something more mid-range, make sure that the tires are good. This car is quite lucky as, in fact, this car is in really, really good shape. I can't imagine what kid got this as a gift and, I don't know, used it five times. It's kind of crazy to me. These early versions will often have the rear t uh, the rear tires dry rotted. These are these are, are pretty good. I've been conditioning them. They're getting better, but they were quite stiff originally. In fact, you can see the roof tire. Uh, it's got some weird deformation to it, and it is like steel. I don't know what is. I mean, it is just I I dare not even squeeze it for the fear that it will shatter and splinter things into my eyes. The early versions with the non-diff transmission, I have found quite a number of these with broken transmissions. It seems that the later versions, like the heads-up turbo hopper with the diff, and again, I'm pretty sure those have a diff. If anybody out there uh, can confirm that, that would be fantastic. I know that the Bandit variation, the later ones, did have a differential. The diff version, I think, would have a little more uh, life left in the transmission. Oftentimes people will buy these and rip out the standard electronics and put in upgraded electronics. I would very much hesitate to change the motor because if you go, God forbid, brushless on one of these, which I've seen done, um, I suspect that the lives on the gear train is going to be quite limited, if not driven with uh, quite a bit of care. If you are looking to gut one of these and put in modern electronics, I, I would very much recommend one that's got a little bit more abuse done to it, or even maybe one that's got a bad electronics. It's getting harder and harder to find these, so I think the ones that are fully operational, like this one here, for example, would maybe be better left um, you know, unaltered, but there's plenty out there that are damaged that would love to have some new life and have some upgraded electronics. These oftentimes have rather good bodies, so I haven't seen many issues with the bodies. It even seems that the tire seems to protect the body from most rollovers. There are a couple variations of this. I believe the other version of it is red. I, I also believe in certain countries there was a white one. I'm no expert on these cars. You're gonna be able to find a lot of information on these cars on the internet as they are quite popular even to this day. The last variant, the heads up turbo hopper, I think is quite nice because it does have the little driver's head which turns left and right based on your, your steering input. You also want to make sure that if you do want one to have its original electronics, that the batteries haven't been left in there for the past 30 years, because I suspect that all that alkaline, in the event they have, uh, the batteries have perished and leaked, will have damaged the battery connectors in the battery compartment. Well, enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and see how this little guy runs. We'll do a quick run just to see what kind of range we get with the original electronics and the original radio control. So the car is working well. It's running some 1.5 volt AA batteries, so we are going to see its maximum performance here. I've got it in slow. We'll see about putting it in fast. Let's see how it goes. Now this car does have a motor driven servo. However, if I let off the throttle, the car will not steer left and right. This car will only steer if you apply throttle. This is in low gear or low speed, I should say, because there are two speeds to the radio. The car in slow, as you can tell, it's kind of not the fastest thing in the world, but I will say that controllability is excellent. Kick it in fast. When you do put it into fast, the car does, it's, a, it's quite a, a noticeable speed difference here. Huh, I just realized that if you go in fast and then you turn, it goes into slow, let go, it goes back into fast. That's interesting. I've uh, never noticed that with this car before. I must say though that its range is absolutely excellent. Uh, this is a, probably a 30 year old car now and despite that, the electronics are behaving beautifully. There's no glitching. There's no bad behavior to speak of. It has a little tire on top. Yeah. Decor. Oh, that's decor? Decor.
going very slow. I hope you enjoyed that bit of running. Uh, this really brought back some nostalgic value to me. I never had one as a child. However, like I said, many of my friends did. And I always had an irrational hatred of this car because I was a Nico Turbo Panther man. And as far as I was concerned, this thing was the enemy. Fact of the matter is both cars were effectively the same car targeted at the same demographic and they were both fantastic vehicles. I do have a video coming up where I'm going to pit this car against the Turbo Panther, which I've never actually seen done before. And I'm also going to use the Tamiya Grasshopper as the baseline. It, the Grasshopper was always one of those cars that bridged this generation of RC cars uh, and the maybe the RC10 kind of high-end generation of RC car. I think that'd be a very sufficient way of comparing the lot. I recently got a package in from Shapeway, so I'll be going through a number of upgrades that I've been waiting for, so that'll be awesome. In the meantime, again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, if you like these particular crazy brands of, of uh, vehicle reviews and, and old school car upgrades. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Ampro Engineering on both. And before you take off, please check out my Shapeways page. There's a link in the end credits and in the description, as well as the band Blue Pinto, who ever so graciously allows me to use their music in my videos. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time.